The escort carrier, also known as the jeep carrier or the baby flat top, among other colloquial terms, emerged during World War II as a result of the prevailing sense of urgency and the imperative to acquire as many carriers as possible, regardless of their subpar quality. The primary concern was the timely deployment of aircraft to the front line, regardless of the means employed. In such circumstances, an escort carrier proved to be the ideal vessel, as it provided air support for sluggish convoys without necessitating the allocation of a swift fleet carrier, which would have been an imprudent allocation of resources. When considering the strain on the industry due to excessive utilization, it is worth noting that smaller shipyards may have been capable of constructing merchant vessels equipped with flight decks and hangars. While the prevailing notion often depicts American shipyards mass-producing such carriers, it is important to recognize that the concept originated from a different perspective across the Atlantic. In the 1930s, the British recognized the necessity of air protection for convoys, surface raiders, and submarines. The potential challenge of countering surface ships could indeed be addressed, however, it would be advantageous to prevent their proximity to the convoy altogether. The hypothetical threat of enemy aircraft, as exemplified by German Condors during wartime, presented a significant concern. The reluctance to allocate a carrier for this purpose stemmed from the fact that these ships were considerably swifter than the vessels they were assigned to protect. Moreover, the scarcity of such carriers, even prior to incurring combat losses, rendered them a costly asset primarily intended for offensive operations rather than escort duties. The concept of utilizing passenger liners or freighters as escorts in the North Atlantic, traveling at speeds of 20 knots or lower, was introduced. Initially, the British had plans to convert approximately five passenger liners into escorts at the beginning of the war. However, these plans were delayed due to insufficient aircraft and pilots for the fleet carriers, let alone escorts. Nevertheless, as the demand for convoy escorts became increasingly urgent, the British adjusted their approach. They repurposed a captured German merchant vessel, the Hanover, which can be regarded as the pioneering example of a genuine escort ship. Escort carrier HMS Audacity was a notable example of repurposing older vessels, such as Argus, for a role they were not originally designed for. However, the conversion of Audacity itself was a time-consuming process. As a result, interim measures were implemented, such as attaching a single-use hurricane aircraft to a catapult on the bow of a freighter or simply affixing a flight deck without any additional military capabilities onto merchant ships. These makeshift solutions did not involve fully integrating the vessels into active military service, as they were only able to accommodate a limited number of swordfish aircraft. Despite their temporary nature, these emergency methods served a functional purpose. The utilization of these ships was primarily limited to emergency situations, and Audacity, in particular, had a brief operational period of a few months before encountering significant damage. Nevertheless, it is noteworthy that these ships played a pivotal role in paving the way for the future. It is important to acknowledge that, due to the overwhelming strain on British industrial capacity, the United Kingdom sought assistance from the United States to construct these vessels. It is worth mentioning that, concurrently, the United States Navy USN, was already considering the conversion of merchant ships into smaller carriers, albeit with a focus on their own side of the Atlantic. Initially, this concept was primarily intended for training purposes. Admiral Halsey, in particular, advocated for this concept. Their initial designation as Auxiliary Aircraft Escort Vessels ABG, and subsequent designation as Auxiliary Aircraft Carriers ACV, show that there were considerations for using these vessels in aircraft transport roles. Both of these roles are auxiliary in nature, as they primarily serve for transportation and training purposes rather than being classified as actual warships. The early ships demonstrated their exceptional suitability for convoy escort duties due to their comparable speed with the convoys, leading to their subsequent deployment in such roles. The subject of discussion pertains to the escort carrier CDE, which is commonly referred to as a more familiar calling card. While the USS Long Island the initial vessel of this type was hastily constructed, while subsequent ones gradually adopted a more standardized approach. The initial few vessels were converted from existing merchant ships, with this trend continuing from Long Island and the Avengers through the Pogas and culminating in the Sangamon class. The Sangamon class was built on the hulls of oilers, resulting in certain peculiarities, such as being the largest of its kind and having all the machinery, including the smokestacks, located at the stern. 
Notably, the stern holds the most significant feature in this regard. The converted oilers, despite their conversion, retain the capacity to transport fuel for their escorts, a capability that other escort carriers lack. With the exception of the Sanctimans, which the British specifically requested due to their dire need for ships that they were unable to build domestically, the United States would lease a sizable number of these ships to the Royal Navy. It is worth noting that the last two classes of ships, constructed by American shipyards, differed from the aforementioned vessels. An example of such a class is the Commencement Bay class. The purpose-built escort carriers, known as CVEs, were constructed following the prevailing practice of modifying tanker hulls. However, these carriers were built from the keel up, with their design being based on tanker hulls but distinct in their own right. Notably, the Casablanca class of escort carriers represented a significant advancement in this regard, as they were fully purpose-built designs. This allowed for a remarkable increase in production, as all 50 Casablanca-class carriers were constructed within a relatively short time frame, spanning from mid-1943 to mid-1944. The construction of S-4 carriers, although challenging, demonstrated remarkable engineering prowess. However, their engine power was compromised, highlighting certain sacrifices. Nevertheless, these limitations did not hinder the American industry from producing a substantial quantity of S-4 carriers. Despite the aforementioned sacrifices, these vessels played a crucial role in the war effort, offering exceptional service. Although their capacity to carry aircraft was limited to approximately 24 planes, with some variation, these carriers were effectively utilized. Consequently, U-boats and aerial attacks would encounter significant obstacles when confronting an escort carrier group. If there was a need for expeditious transportation of aircraft, escort carriers proved to be ideal for fulfilling such a role. Although not particularly swift vessels, they possessed the capability to launch planes in close proximity to their intended destinations. This explanation is comprehensible. For a brief period, escort carriers assisted with the dockside unloading of planes in contrast to conventional aircraft. These ships also assumed the functions of fleet or light carriers, albeit at considerable risk. Nevertheless, they were capable of continuously fulfilling this role. It is worth noting that, particularly in the American context, their offensive capabilities were predominantly employed. The role of ground support actions encompassed the transportation of bombers and fighters, which were effectively employed for engaging ground targets or providing protection to bombers during their missions. In this capacity, escort carriers proved to be highly proficient due to their cost-effectiveness and swift deployment, despite the crews being cognizant of the ship's relatively low durability. The designation of CVE, often interpreted as combustible, vulnerable, and expendable, or more ominously, Kaiser coffins, further underscored the perception of these ships. It is worth noting that even Japan eventually acquiesced to the notion of utilizing escort carriers. Although they entered the scene relatively late and constructed only a limited number of aircraft carriers, their level of success was not particularly noteworthy. It is important to note that the Imperial Japanese Army built and used a portion of these carriers, serving as a prime illustration of the extent to which inter-service rivalry can manifest. However, it should be noted that these Army vessels pushed the boundaries of the aircraft carrier classification, as they were versatile ships capable of fulfilling multiple roles. The fleet consisted of a limited number of aircraft carriers, most of which were not actively deployed. Among them, the renowned Akatsumaru met a tragic fate when it was torpedoed and promptly exploded, resulting in the loss of over 2,000 lives. In contrast, the Navy ships were operational and served a similar purpose as escorts for convoys and aircraft transports as their Allied counterparts. These Japanese ships possessed comparable capabilities to Allied escort carriers. However, it is important to note that Japan, in stark contrast to the industrial might of the United States, faced significant limitations in terms of available resources. Of the ships to use them like the U.S. ended while still faster than building a full-on fleet carrier, Japan proved incapable of building a lot of escorts off merchant hulls, not helping this of course being American submarines preying on what merchants Japan did have, they never had enough transports as it was so converting a ton of them to carriers was of questionable utility in any event. Navy would operate escort carriers during the war in any case, the Germans would try to convert some ships but they never finished them and the other Allied powers didn't operate any of the American swarm of escort carriers at least during the war so where does that leave us? 
Well, escort carriers were a very World War II invention when a lot of ships were needed as quickly as possible after the war ended with a glut of fleet carriers in service, the very vast majority of the escorts were quickly decommissioned, some were reconverted to merchant ships, a couple would find their way into being passenger liners on the Europe to Australia route, which must have been interesting for the people who stuck aboard those, and some would linger on in secondary roles for a bit longer. No matter the case, their time in the sun had come and gone, there wasn't as much need for them with the grand battles of the Pacific or the convoy protection. Thanks for watching.